Rick Holland, your host of Healthy Tech Talk. Uh, <laughs> All right, do this again, would you please? <laughs> Become more productive and use small... <laughs> we cover such topics... Top topics? <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you just caught me reading this book called Web Video. This is a great book if you uh, if you want to record what you're doing via video podcasting. My name is Rick Holland, your host for Healthy Tech Talk. I lost my pen. Okay, here we go. It is Thursday, September 13th, day 30th of our 30-day program. Yeah, it is here. And um, I've got, I, I saw the neurosurgeon yesterday. I keep calling him a neurologist, but he's actually a neurosurgeon. And I'll tell you what's happening with me uh, after the break. All right? See you on the flip side. Bye-bye. Don't go away. It's really exciting stuff on our last day. Welcome to the eFlexonics Podcast Network. Join us for the latest tips and tricks from experts in their fields, showing you how you can be happy, healthy, and more productive when using technology, either at home or at work. Remember, tech shouldn't have to hurt. Our motto is, everything healthful and helpful for the computer user. Enjoy the show, Rick and Pat. All right, I blew it. I should have given you my, my particulars on the, on the teaser, so, uh, or, or the intro. Blood sugar sitting at 7.8. Blood pressure sitting at 134, and pain tolerance is 7. Welcome to the show. Anyway, I've got a I've got a great book here, a web video, and it is by Jenny Bourne with David Bernstein, and it is a phenomenal book. I want you to go out and get it. And you know, sometimes there's books that you you buy on Amazon that are digital books, ebooks, and you can download them. That, that is great. But sometimes you need to hold a book in your hand, and this is one of the books that I would suggest that you go. Out and get, if you're interested in podcasting, it is just, just chock full of great information. Anyway, let me tell you what happened yesterday when I was at the neurosurgeon. We go in, my wife and I, because my wife drove, because I don't, I, any, any driving over 10 minutes, it really bothers me in my neck and stuff. It's just the vibration of the car, right? So we go in there and it took us uh, an hour and a half, an hour and three quarters to get in there. And we get in there, we sit down with the neurosurgeon, and I have my little CD of my MRI, and I give it to him, and he puts it in the computer. And he's looking at it, and then he says, uh, I says, well, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, waiting in anticipation, because this is the, the, the big guy, the guy that has the final say, whether you have to have a surgery or not, right? And he says, well, at this time, I don't think you need surgery, um, but you do have medium to severe stenosis, and you have something else, and I thought my wife said, I thought I heard him say myofascia, I think that's right. We'll get more information as, as time goes on, but I'm pretty sure he said myofascia, which really means, I did a little research, and it means um, that my physiotherapist says, think about a roast, and you know the, the roast when you have those white spots? Those are, are irritates, irritants in the muscle, and they get irritated and they they don't work as well as they should. So I'm going to do a lot more research on myofascia pain. Um, he's going to send me to a doctor that is going to inject needles all, all over my neck to see if we can't get control of the myofascia. So we know two things. We know medium to severe uh, stenosis and myofascia pain, along with a whole bunch of other stuff on the, on the MRI thing that, that I'm not going to go into. I'll, I'll go into in future shows, this being the last one. But... This is not the last time that I will be talking about this. Hey, if this series of shows, why did I do this series of shows? Well, I, I want to show you, the viewer, how easy it is to put together your own 5 to 10 minute daily show. Even though you have chronic pain, you can work around it. Some days I don't feel like doing the show. Trust me, some days I do not feel like doing the show. I'm, I'm nauseated. I got a lot of pain. I can hardly sit up in the chair. It's just, it's a real challenge, but it taught me a couple of things, this show. It taught me that you have to go on. Even if it's for 10 minutes a day, you gotta, you, you, you have to go on. So let me, let me tell you the, 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 
the platform of the show today is called How to Create Your Own Recovery Podcast. Ah, I noticed I didn't say pain management podcast. Podcast. I said, oh, how do you cover? How do you create your own recovery podcast? So this has been my pain management podcast and, and also recovery. But I think what I'll do is I'll do a little bit different show next time, and I will focus on uh, my professionals. I'd like to have them in the studio or go to their place of business and interview them and say, you know, Rick uh, did this when he was in my place of business and it helped or it didn't help or, what, you know, whatever. So I can address my professionals. Uh, wouldn't it be great to have my doctor on here, my physiotherapist on here, my massage therapist on here, my, you know, the acupuncture lady on here? That treated me. It would be great to have the professional on here, so you can see the people that that helped me recover. So anyway, let's get back to our subject, should we? Shall we? So first thing that, and my suggestion, if you want, and and this is really really good therapy. It's been great therapy for me to do my own show. So I want to extend that challenge to you. This is phenomenal therapy for people that want to record their either their pain management and or recovery podcast show. Listen, you're going to help people. So the first thing I would like to say is try to keep the main talk between five and ten minutes. Don't go over. Sometimes my shows with the intro and then the the teaser they go into fourteen to sixteen minutes maximum. You don't don't go over fifteen minutes if you if you can help it at all. Right. So your main talk should be about five or ten minutes. Number two, research the topic you're talking about. Do a good Google research, um, and it should be of a personal nature, and it should be a passionate story from your personal experience or your life's experience. Okay, if you've got chronic pain, tell them what you're going through. Tell them how you're treating it. Tell them what you don't have to tell them what meds you're on, but but tell them what exercises you're doing to combat. I was the physiotherapist today, and I should have I should have asked him. You know, now that I know this stuff, what exercises? But I'll, I'll ask him next time I see him. Number three. Create enough courage to step in front of the camera and microphone. Now that, <laughs> that takes, for some people, think about this. Which would be worse for you? Stepping in front of a microphone and a camera where nobody's there, no stress, or stepping in front of a whole bunch of people and giving a talk, tons of stress. See, this will even make you a better person if you have to go out and do motivational speaking or, or any kind of spug, public speaking, once you do it in front of a camera and a microphone, it becomes much more easy to do. Number four, do not try to look too professional on your show. Don't do it. If you're looking for a perfect show, it will never be created. And, I mean, things go wrong in the show. Sometimes the sound isn't good enough to my standards. Sometimes the picture isn't good enough. I've improved the studio a lot just by putting this acoustic foam back here, right right back here, and putting it on all the sides so that the sound is just wonderful now. So these things I've learned as, I go, as I've gone along. And in future shows, I'm going to have a lot more people interview in this particular space here. Number five, show people how much fun you're having and challenge others to do the same thing by creating their own show. So I'm, I'm sending out a challenge. Has my cell phone over there updated. <laughs> I'm sending out a challenge to all of you people with chronic pain or, or to all of the professional health givers and caregivers out there. If you're a physiotherapist, an acupuncturist, a massage therapist, please, are you thinking about doing a video podcast to help people in chronic pain? Have you, as, as a professional, um, a health professional, do you have a website? Add video podcasts to this website as you, as the main speaker. It's going to be brilliant. Let me turn down that phone. So we're on number five, right? We're going to go to number six. I forgot to turn, to turn my uh, volume on my phone off. There we go. Now the ringer's down. Okay, number six. Realize that the purpose of the show is to help people and then go ahead and do it. Remember, you are there. It is your show to help. That is, that, isn't that why you're doing a video podcast show in the first place? To show compassion and passion to people? To help them to say, you know what, I have such and such a disease or an illness or a break in the leg or stenosis, or whatever it is, and this is how I am healing it? Because when people, when people get, say they get down and out and they get depressed or they're nearing depression or they're, they're going to a dark place, you want to be able to give them your show 
and have them be uplifted and have them have fun and have them be interested in what they're doing and get out there and be active. Some of the things that I'm doing, uh, for example, I was I had big hopes for using uh, Noom, the program Noom, and using the GPS chip on my uh, phone to track where I'm walking. Well, that didn't work out exactly the way I wanted it to. So one day I would do it, the other day, the next day I would forget to do it, right? So I go to try to go to the pool Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and Sunday I try to walk. Well, sometimes I, I forgot to, to turn on the program, so... <laughs> that part of the program kind of fell off. But you will learn as you go along. I encourage you to, to make your own show. Really, and I said this at the beginning, the very, very first video podcast that I did on, on this particular program, I said, it is a video diary of what I'm going through personally. Isn't that great? Make it your own personal story. Because it is. Number seven. Oh, this is great. For all of you people that Say your pain or your injury or your disease has interrupted your income, has interrupted your job, you know, you've had to be off work. Write an ebook about your show and put it on Amazon for profit. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these 30, 30 small shows and I'm going to add to them in text and pictures and then I'm going to write stories on each small show that I've done, you know, as much as I can, right? So say, for example, I've done 30 shows. Say I do, uh, say I do over the course of the next month, I write 10 pages per show on what I talked about. 10 pages. Now you think that's a lot, but really you could do a couple of pages a day. Well, if you do 10 pages in 30 shows, that's 300 pages, isn't it? That's a book. Even half that's a book, for crying out loud. I mean, I did a book on podcasting that was over, what, 75 pages, uh, 12,000 words, and like nine, no, no, more than that, about uh, 22 pictures. But it was a lot of fun. It was a, it was a smallish book, but wow, go ahead and do it. And you would be surprised. You know, uh, some people put their books on Amazon and they do phenomenally well. And then you've got the video and the podcast shows to link to the book. So really, you're, you're building your, your video podcast shows first, and then you're adding text to them on the bottom where, where your blog is, right? And I can show you how to do that. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to, I'm going to do it using this show. Uh, and then what you do is you, you write a book and then put it on Amazon. So th this could be a, you know, this could be your next big thing. This could be the way you're going to make income. If you can't go out into the real world and work, if you can't, my, I can't, let's face the facts. Um, severe stenosis, I'm not going to be able to do a heavy, heavy physical job anymore. Right? That's out the window. And my physiotherapist today said, we can't stop it, but we can make it so it doesn't get any worse. Right? So I wanted to share with you our last day. I really wanted to spend a couple of minutes with you and say, hey, listen, I have enjoyed these 30 days so much with the Miracle Ball, with the, with the Vitamix, with the nutrition, with the, you know, the, almost like the, the, the relaxation exercises, I have had a blast and it's all because of you out there, the viewer. So I want to thank you so much. Don't forget to pick up this book, Web Video. Now there's other books on Web Video as well, but this is one of my favorites. Um, in my other book, if you're interested on in how to blog and podcast, I cover equipment, I cover cameras, I cover microphones, I cover placement, I cover soundproofing your room, I cover how I took my uh, smart smartphone and I have a uh, a sound meter on here. <laughs> yeah, and it takes the sound, the decibel pressures from the room, and this is how I, I tuned my broadcast studio with my smartphone. I mean, who knew, right? All these little tips and tricks. So. If you're interested in that, I'll send you the link for that as well, my, my book on how to podcast, and then I'm going to join it in with this show. What a great idea. So listen, send in your stories of what you're going to do to HealthyTechTalk at gmail.com. My name is Rick Holland, and what I'll do is I will put your story in some of my next podcast shows. Folks, thank you so much. My name is Rick Holland, your host for Healthy Tech Talk. You haven't seen the last of me, but this has been the end show of our 30-day pain management specials. Thanks a lot, folks. We'll see you again. Stay out of trouble, would you? I know some of you. I just know it. I can feel it. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye-bye.